first part of the class, kids class, just gonna give a little homework for the kids, then uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and then today I'm gonna focus a little bit on uh, some solo drills for MMA, and we're gonna move on uh, with the striking. I, I went over the basics, we're gonna do one more time. Just gonna try to get a different uh, footwork and, uh, and then go from there, all right? So we're starting with the kids. If kids, you should be watching this at home or review with your parents. Um, get the exercises. I'm gonna break down a little drill for you guys. And then um, very quick, you guys can um, get, recruit your parents, your siblings, your cousins, your friends. Uh, actually, not your friends, because you're probably all your cousins, because you're probably practicing social distances, so you're not going to be with, with anybody in your house. But get your mom, your dad, or your brother, or your sister, all right? Ooh. I'm not going to go through the whole warm-up. I think we, we have done that before. But I'm going to tell you kids, like, even adults, if you want to, a um, few things you can do for warm-up at home. Don't forget. If you have your yard, you can do a lot of jogging uh, laps at your yard if you have a bigger yard or your driveway, right? But um, if you are, um, say, in your living room, you don't need to have a mats like we have in, a, in, in our school. But your parents want you to move. You want to do some jujitsu related, uh, related warm up. So some ideas here, right? You kids remember, number one, uh, Hip scapes, you don't need to have padded mats, right? So when you're doing your hip scapes, remember to keep your feet on the ground and just move more, right? So move more to the side and not backwards. Take your lower back off the ground, toes on the ground. Get that here, rotation. Here, rotation, right? This is all good. Another one you can do from home is the bear walks. So let's do the bear walks the same way that you would do maybe a uh, bullfight guard pass. So just going side to side. So for instance, if I start here, we can go one, two, always turn around. One, two, one, two, one, two. And then you keep going. You could do that. If you have maybe some gloves, you can do that on the driveway, just like, or if you want to do it in the grass, you can do it on the grass, easy, right? Second one would be a Spider-Man, or some, uh, how do they call it, like, um, climbing kind of stuff, right? So another exercise would be this. So I'm gonna go really low, really low, really low, Really low, really low, really low. Just stay really, really low. So remember, it's like you're climbing a wall, you're Spider-Man, and you try to stay as low as possible, okay? When I did it, actually I'm just looking at, uh, my behind was high. Try to stay low. Try to stay low, right? Hip skips, bear walks, you're kind of Spider-Man. That's pretty good warm up for you guys, okay? Now, moving on, we're gonna do some drills that you guys might need your parents to help you out. <laughs> Get your dad, your mom, whoever takes care of you and see if you're gonna demonstrate on me, okay? Um, take it easy with your parents. So look at this. I'm gonna use Sylvia, because Sylvia's is small like a kid. But that, uh, it's height wise, right? And you're gonna ask your parents to be like this. All right, good time for you to convince someone in your family to do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. See, we're gonna do the setup side to side to get the knee cross pass. Look, go, just that. And then your, your father, your mother, whoever takes care of you, 
can just stay here, and that's your exercise. Look. Good. She gets good control of my legs. She makes sure that I don't bring my knee in front of her belly. She's pushing this out. She's not crushing my leg. She's putting this foot away from me. Right? And you can see, like, I can stay here. She's not crushing my leg. The reason why she's not crushing, it's because she has her toes on the ground on this leg here. She's going to go that way. Look, here. Now, if you have a carpet area, or if you have mats in your house, that's a good opportunity for you to look. Well, maybe your friend or your, your father, your mother, whoever is in, who is helping you, not gonna be wearing the uniform. So work your underhook, get the arm, put it under your armpit, keep your head close to your friend. Remember what I said last class, she has one hand here, she has one hand back here. This is another hand. She pushes my face a little bit up. And now, she remember the baseball slide. She slides, get good side control. You know, give a good hug like your parents, right from here. Go back again. So let's understand like what's going on, right? If you guys watched my last online class, you will understand. Seal is controlling my knees. And remember what we did last class. We work with the hooks. If Silver back up, I would sit up. Right? That's what the homework was last week. If she moved to one side, I would try to stay in front of her here. She moves a little bit. She got closer to me. I would go on my back and create controls, one foot behind. If she moves that way, I didn't have to do anything with just the hooks. If she moved the other way, I'll hook. She's moving to her left, I use my left leg. She's moving to the right, I use my right leg. Simple. So that's what we talked last week about, right? Now, if she moves uh, away from me or sit up, she gets closer again, closer. But if she wants to pass my guard, what I mentioned on our last online class is that she wants to take my feet away from her body. So that's why she's going with strong flight stance. Her forearm is right next to my shin, and this other one could be to, and she will clean this foot out of her hip using her elbow or so now she doesn't and she needs to be fast and she doesn't want me to get another control now she gotta clean this one as well she can push my knees to my chest and my feet are not really like anchoring or touching her too much remember this guys we always like do this in class and everybody likes if silver don't get it really can you get sideways here if silver doesn't get a really good posture and she stays up like this, this is so much easier for me to throw her overhead. Right? You guys know that. Remember, like, we always like to do that because it's fun. So, if she stays on her fight stairs really low, it's a little bit harder for me to tuck under her to lift her. So that's why, look, legs bent, arms bent, her behind is back there. Right? She's strong on her feet and she's not letting me pull her arms and break those grips. She, she will shuffle to this side here so you guys can see. Look, right? Look her foot back here. Toes on the ground and she has a good control. Now she will get this arm and put it under her armpit. This arm under my armpit here. This one under hers. This one under mine. Head is the third hand pushing my face up. Slide, get a guard pass. Cool? So kids and parents, homework assigned. Here's what we're gonna do. Kids warm me up with monkey or bear walks and Spider-Man walks, cool? Second thing is, after we 
you finish the warm up and of course hip scapes. After you finish that, get your mom or your dad, tell, tell them to wear some pants, like long pants, like jeans or whatever. Because if they don't do jujitsu, you will need to grab onto something, right? So one more excuse for you guys to tell your dad or your mom or whoever takes care of you to go train jujitsu so you can do your homework, correct? Uh, remember that the last homework I assigned to the kid was to improve, that was like in class, was to improve your hip scapes, right? And that was like homework for everyone. So go back to that, increase, improve your hip scape uh, skills and do those guard pack, uh, those uh, two warm up exercises. So for the kids will be one minute hip scapes, one minute bear walks, one minute Spider-Man on the ground. And so those are total three minutes. You're gonna do that three times. So that's just nine minutes, okay? You guys cannot be home just eating chocolate, candy, and playing video games. You need to stay active, get back in shape because it's gonna be really awesome to see you guys again, okay? That's the homework for the kids. We're gonna jump right in class for the adults, all right? Kids, for watching this, bow. Don't forget, how do we bow? Kids class, feet together, toes lined up together, heels together, body straight, your uniform tight. And you know what? Wear your uniform at home while you're doing the exercises, okay? Feel it like you are in class. Try to feel like you are in class, all right? You guys leave here, you don't leave jiu-jitsu here. You bring your jiu-jitsu with you. So, at home, wear your gi, say, Mom, Dad, I need to do my homework. Because Professor Luigi asked to. Us. All right. Adults, here's the deal. Yesterday, I recorded the six-pack um, BJJ drill, correct? Uh, in the six-pack, people thought that was... Uh, there were six exercises, actually just five exercises, huh? Sorry. That's sadly, sorry. Five exercises. And those five exercises um, target mostly core solo drills. So don't get mixed up with uh, thinking that it's six, <laughs> uh, six exercises for your six packs. Six pack. You know, I have a six pack. It's just under a layer of fat. But it's here. It's here just has a little cushion, okay? But I do have. <laughs> that wasn't good. <clears throat> All right. So for warm up, do the six pack BJJ warm up. Six pack BJJ warm up. This, go to the online session here. Um, what we're gonna be targeting today, gonna be the same thing and just work with the kids, but I'm gonna give you guys a little more um, how to do this at home, right? So one of the things I'm gonna do. No, it's not this. Again, just because I have this, you could you could improvise. Remember, if you don't have a dummy or anything, I just have a dot here. Um, I could use my dot, that little dot. <coughs> She saw the ball, she came right in. Uh, <laughs> I gotta give you guys, first of all, oh, so what I was saying, improvise, right? Try to improvise. I'm using the ball, just, I have dummies here, correct? I have that grappling dummy. I have a few other grappling dummies, but I'm not gonna use it because I, I want you guys to feel like you can do this at home without having to um, have any other tools you can improvise. I've seen people like with good videos teaching how to make dummies, right? So one of the things I do um, when I'm warming up, as I'm holding that low uh, pooping position in the woods, um, try to maybe start doing this kind of setup here for you where you're strong on your toes, sitting on your heel with this foot pointing forward, okay? I just look at it, it looks like, a, I just look in the video that I just uh, 
the delay, it looks like a poop, a black ball. So I'm gonna move the black ball back. <laughs> it did look right. <laughs> so I'm gonna do this here, guys. Look, side to side. And I know this can be challenging for a lot of people in the beginning, especially newer guys, but try to see how is the progression, how your knee, your knees feel, and etc. So usually from here, it's just a good exercise. So I move to my left, stay on my toes, no rush, move back, hand on the ground. And I, I pretty much use this position here with my hands because I use this right elbow to push my knee out and push my other leg out. And that's kind of like a stretching a little bit. So if I move, I can have good mobility here. And I'm trying to resemble Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Okay, so I'm trying to resemble that. Uh, some positions that we get ourselves into here. Okay, right? Um, quick thing, like if you can't, because everybody's different, I'm gonna move the ball, because the ball behind it when I'm squatting, like I said, looks like I put the giant black uh, piece of turd. All right, so I, I like to, to get to here and just maybe get used to being in this position. Open my hips. Um, you know, if you go to many places in the world, people don't, don't use chairs, but they sit like this. Actually, it's pretty good for your hips. So again, just creating a little bit of mobility here, okay? I don't know if you guys caught that, but what happened was this here. The ball was behind me, and I squat, and looking at the mirror uh, on the monitor here, it looked like I hooked that, so, so that's what I meant, all right? Okay, so going back to the ball, you could do, you could start here. Imagine that the ball is somebody's lap, okay? So same thing that Siva was uh, demonstrating for the kids' class just a little bit before we started this. So it could be here. Now I'm gonna put my hands on the ground and you can just sort of like try to get this agility here, right? Now, if you have a bigger, one of those exercise ball, exercise ball, balls, you can use that as well. I'm just using here as far as like solo drills first. So I could just like quick shift, right? Quick shifts. This will resemble my setup for the cross knee sliding uh, baseball pass. Baseball uh, sliding cut, sliding knee cut pass, or something like that. Right? It's here. Right? That's what I mentioned that I would give you guys a little workout more related to legs. That was last um, Saturday. This, this is a good burn. It burns pretty well if you keep doing like that. Right? Now, if I was just standing and I'm doing by myself, I don't have absolutely nobody to do it. All I have is some sort of, this is a slam ball. Some other sort of medicine ball. It could be the other big ball. You're just gonna float more. You're gonna be, Andre Galvão has really good videos training with the medicine exercise ball. Uh, the big, those big ones. So I could be here, imagine like I'm doing the entry, right? So I'm pushing and I'm here. Now I just roll, get to the side. This is like if you don't have anybody to help you out. So as I'm doing my setup, right? This is this is the first thing. So I like to have I like to have that to help me out. So I know that when I'm doing this, even to someone for real, I stay on my toes and I'm not really like crushing any anybody's uh Thigh at all. I'm using just my toes on the ground, heel on my, my behind here, and I'm into this position. 
Now I could play with how I stay sideways and I just ride the ball, get side control. I'm going to post the ball exactly here so you guys can see. Thank you, Tiana. I'm going to demonstrate on this one as well. Boy. So imagine have this axis, this axis, as I'm setting up. When I pass, I pass really along this line. So I go here. Okay? So imagine like ready to get my pass. I get pin the leg. So this is I'm pinning my opponent's leg at the side that I'm going to. We will demonstrate. And I'll demonstrate this like three different ways. Now imagine I can get him under the hook, or get in the lapel, or get in the arm here, bracing the head, or pulling the arm. I just, I have to place my hands on the ground right now. Imagine that from here, I want to go this way. And then I turn. If I was doing a big ball, You even flow more, right? Because imagine like I'm, I'm playing with the ball. So as I do my setup, I will still get the smash. The good about this is that you float and you like get to the side really well. So I like the way that I set up. You know, imagine I can get the ball and I, I keep a little bit deflated for that reason so I can have a good balance. Now, my goal. It's not to put this knee here. First, is to put this side against the ball. And that as I'm rolling, that's what I'm getting here. There's a lot of things you're gonna do. We have like those step through, drop, cut the corner. So, let's see what we're gonna use. <clears throat> If I'm starting from the standing position, so three ways to get the cross cut pass to engage, right? And I will control her here. She will push my legs to my chest. She will shuffle to the side, get a good pin, but she's not crushing my legs. She's not provoking any pain. From here, it's easier for her to capture my arm, pull it under the armpit, and what she will do first, first option, she'll gonna get the lapel, punch it under my armpit, or she will hold and make a pocket grip right below my armpit. And as this knee travels that way, she got a more upright posture. Nope, you can keep upright, slide. And she uses my arm to create space for her thigh to fit under my shoulder blade. Feed all the way through, get a good pressure. You can see how Sylvia held my gi here and had a good trap, okay? So here, she first disconnect my feet, shuffle. Grab the first part that is the easiest for her to, in her go, I want you guys to observe, observe this. You should put my back on the ground, but my hip is twisted that way because how she's pinning my thigh, she's not gonna let me get this hand anywhere that will hinder the pass, so she will tuck it under her armpit, slide 90 degrees. Look how her right hip is almost well, it pretty much touched me and her ribs. And as she's doing the turn, she's capturing this arm and rolling well and getting good head control. Cool. Second option will be so everything starts with the concept disconnect your opponent's feet from you, shuffle. Now she's working. The underhook. Usually, when I'm working the underhook, I use this leg, push it back, arm, 
get down the hook, head goes on the ground, because now, before her hand was flattening my upper body back, now it's her shoulder that is getting that pressure, head down on the ground. I know I'm bigger than her, so it's a little more challenging for her. This arm is here. Now the way that I tweak this, as this head is here, I use my back of my head to push my opponent's face away. Keep going, she can go deeper now, dive out. You can tell like, I don't like this. And then she gets the side control, All right? So these like two ways, one more time here. Good control, good control. Disconnect, shuffle. And then I'm trying to fight here. She's gonna get that underhook and connect her shoulder before I can frame in front of her face. This shoulder gonna travel up, right? From the sternum up to my chin. Her head is gonna move my head this way. Pull and slide. Good job. Okay? And uh, there's one thing sometimes I do which is not fun for who's on the bottom. She's here. She pushes. Disconnect. Get that. Boom. She will keep this hand here. And this is vicious. She's going to lean a little bit more on top of me. But as, uh, hold up. As she's pushing this out, hold up. Hold up. She's pulling my arm. And she's getting the pass right <laughs> So she's gonna do fast because this is like a really like no stop pass. You wanna do this fast as fast as you can. Alright, so here, here, she's gonna go whoop, pop, pop, and she punches this away from me. Right? So Wednesday, Wednesday I will tweak and we're gonna work on this guard pass for no gear. For submission grappling. Because there's a few options and um, Siva likes one way that Lucas Lepre does too. And I'm gonna ask her to show. Uh, maybe we do a little bit gi and no gi. Uh, she saw Lucas doing that. And Lucas is a really good guy. I recommend you guys watching his videos. Um, he, in my opinion, Lucas Lepre is one of the most well, first of all, I'm a big fan. Um, he used to come here and teach here on the weekend sometimes when he was in New York. He taught a seminar at my, my school. But Lucas, for me, he's one of the most upright guys in the jiu-jitsu world and uh, amazing jiu-jitsu, always evolving. And I like how Silva picked up this detail from beating the quarter guard with the almost a cross knee pass and it was pretty cool. I, I think uh, you, you really like it, right? Yeah. yeah, so stay tuned. That's for Wednesday, all right? So those for the warm-up today, recapping, uh, we, we, what I would like you guys to do is the six-pack BJJ warm-up for warm-up. Don't forget the joint mobilization. I'm going to record the, more, the joint mobilization, uh, just the, the sequence, and keep it in a separate video. Um, and then I'm going to do the A-ROM the active range of motion warm-up techniques and put in a separate video as well. I'm probably gonna do that tomorrow and I'll upload here on our channel. And um, and then do the six pack BJJ warm-up and see how you can work this at home, all right? Again, grab your wife, grab your husband or grab your boyfriend or grab your girlfriend and um, just have them. You guys, it's a great moment to spend quality time with the family anyways, all right? Awesome. Quick break. Um, just going to change, put my shorts, and I'll be right back with just the final drills for the MMA guys. It's going to be quick. Striking and MMA guys. So even if you sign up here just for Muay Thai, and I'm trying to do some uh, some tips here for you guys for striking, uh, specific for the Muay Thai guys, the striking guys, it's good to know these other drills are going to have the, the MMA guys doing as well. All right, so I'll be right back, guys. Just one sec. Huh?
Entendi. Vai ter que pegar o telefone dela. Ah, porque agora eu tô indo direto, eu vou fazer na próxima. Não, amanhã eu vou fazer. Alright, guys. I'm on my show you roll gear for no gear and MMA. You guys know that I really like show you roll. And uh, they support me a lot. And uh, I really appreciate it. So, you guys should always check show you roll. For sure. Show you roll.com. While we work for the MMA guys, last time, we try to focus on that jab position, good rotation of your hand and shoulder up. Position-wise, paying attention a lot for how you have, you, you keeping your fight stance the same, right? So as I move, I would say to the guys, like, I, I mean, it's just a general rule of thumb. Things change and you can, you can, you can change your fight stance. You, you can adapt and and um, and during the fight we end up like um, again adapting, changing, etc. But for shadow boxing, what I like to do is I like to try every to keep everything solid. My my striking, my form, right? Hands up, chin down. Try to be conscious about where my opponent can hit that will knock me out, right, cold. So my concern is with the delta, always, jaw line to the chin and my liver, right? So I don't wanna get um, punched in the liver, I don't wanna get kicked in the liver, and if it's self-defense, I also don't, get, don't wanna get cut, don't cut, uh, kick on my, and cut my groin. <laughs> but, so I'm always here, right? Um, don't forget, like, even the stance for self-defense, if we're somebody trying to hit your groin, this is much easier than if you're here, all right? Just have that common sense. In self-defense, you know, you see the tough dudes, like, chest up, uh, everything's wrong about that. Chin up, chest, exposing all your vital organs, your hands are down, uh, your base is scrappy. Nothing help you, helping you stop a, a forward motion against you, right? So this is all bad all the way around, even for, um, especially for self-defense. And of course for MMA. So this is good overall, self-defense. I even play judo a little more stand up like that. I, if I'm wrestling, of course I'm gonna go lower, right? So I have that head control and protecting single legs and etc. But striking and MMA self-defense fight stance is almost the same. And honestly, even if I'm shooting, that's my fight stance. I don't go as isolates. If I'm doing any firearms training, it's pretty much the same. Who came to Bill Raper uh, seminar here, and he's coming again in November, you saw that how he deploys his tools from his waist from here, how he goes for spear elbows and then work different elbows or different uh, power slaps to get clinches from there. So you see, this is universal, okay? So shadow boxing last time, we had, I had you guys work the 12, 3, 6, 9 o'clock footwork. And that's a big turn. And what I explained is that the turn starts with your heel first, right? And your heel first. Then I told you guys to incorporate your one, two, and you guys can incorporate your three, which is your hook, your front hook. Left hook in my case. And going back to footwork, you guys can go to your one, two, three, and then shift, all right? Um, and that was like 90 degrees cut. Now, you guys can start putting one more angle here, one more split. Right, so from 3 o'clock, I'm going to go about 4.30, and then I'm going to go 6, and then I'm going to go, keep, actually, sorry, here, like 7.30, right, and then here I'm going to be 9, and then 10, 30, and then 12. So you can, um, if you need visual cues, get a piece of um, uh, masking tape for painting, 
input like like a clock right and work around remember front foot so you can move a little bit here and then we do the same thing with the back foot either if I'm stepping forward and that's the whole thing when you're using your back foot pay attention if you're not turning short because if you're turning short you're going to end up square off right there so I still want to be somewhat bladed, correct? Somewhat bladed. Things to be cautious as far as self-defense versus um, MMA Muay Thai. MMA, um, and then the Cattell always broke this down really well for me. My arm here is almost, I'm more bladed, right? So I, I expose less of this and I stay a little more bladed. So it's almost I'm holding the shield and holding a spear, right? Shoe, spear, flashlight, cell phone. If it's a firearms situation, I will not get this blade because I don't want to expose this side where I wouldn't have a protection if I was wearing a body armor. And that's how I learned. So I would be more here because I would have a body armor here instead of exposing my sides where most likely you're not gonna have any protection. So just have that in mind, but footwork, it can be almost the same. Matter of fact, if you're doing any firearms training and you wanna get into this more aggressive positioning, you can even open more, open more, and turn a little bit more, right? Again, that's how I learned from the professionals. I'm not making this up, I'm how I learned from real professionals. But it's striking-wise, a little more bladed. One, two. Now, when I'm throwing my hook, things I need to observe is that this hand never, I see people doing hooks and doing this low arm swing here, like going this way. Guys, I, I'm still covering because I don't know. I don't want to go playing to that lottery that, you know, whoever hits who first. So as I'm doing my rotation, I'm always elevating that elbow. I don't want to keep anything low because it will keep my chin unprotected. I want to keep my chin protected, it's here. So I know that people like this, and I know people that like this. I, honestly, I punch more like this, my left hooks, so I punch, but I'm very conscious that there's a slight slope down, decline angle going this way, right? Because I want to go over my opponent's blockage and maybe get through here, okay? So that's why if you're now incorporating your left hook in your shuttle boxing, I'm gonna go one, two, and three. I'm gonna go one, two, and three, right? On my one, two, and three. And I'm not doing this whole thing. Uh, I have different opinions. Sometimes I will really load and let it go through with the left hook if it's the last strike of a combo. And I say strike because it could be punch or kick. But if I wanna follow up with anything, what I'm really doing, remember what I said that with my jab, I kinda like bring my weight slightly back here so I have a good right hand. And now once I deliver that right hand that is really well delivered here, you can tell like this is tight. So now I'm going here. Now, weight came back right here, and then you can follow up with this bilateral, left, right, left, right. Not always. You don't want to keep patterns and um, help your opponent predict what you're doing. But at least, like, you know that from here, I could finish, go back, and I'm still in the fight really well. There's no overexposure of my back. Um, in case my opponent take a step back, it wouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay, uh, see, can I use it right quick? If you have someone to help you out that knows how to throw a one, two, three, uh, quick footwork could be, so when she throws her jab, I know that we slip, right? But this is just a quick footwork. Uh, I'm not saying that you're gonna do this during the fight the whole time, but if you wanna know how to slip with the step as well to get right back in and powder, when she throws a jab, as I slip, I step. 
As she's, pull, she's pulling back, and uh, just stay on the front stance, she's not gonna move. And understand this, the, this is a drill, this is, it can be used as a warm up, could be used as, to develop your footwork skill. I'm not saying that you're gonna do that during the fight, because you're not gonna, have, that takes time, it's not the go, uh, and I'll explain further a little bit more. Because the reason I'm disclaiming this, because a lot of people are gonna say, oh, but when you go back here, she's gonna throw a right hand, of course, of course. But this, again, is a drill, it's a warm up. So take it for what it is, and don't overthink right now too far ahead, because then you you, you beat the purpose of the, the drill. She throws a jab, I step, and I never step rolling too much out or in, right? I just show her my shoulder, right? My eyes still can see the target. She moves back, she's gonna give me time because this is a drill, it's not a technique. She throws a right hand, I'm here. She moves back, now she's gonna throw a left hook and of course, most of the time you throw a left hook. If our opponent's not closer to us and we're putting that left hook behind punches, there will be a little step with the left hook, but because we're doing static for the warm-up purposes, purpose, she's just gonna throw a left hook here and I'm gonna go here. So we're gonna go in a tempo here. One, two, three. One, two, three. So it's gonna be one, two, three. One, no, punch straight. You don't need to punch away from me. She, I'm gonna have her like at a distance that she can make contact, okay? Uh, ask your friend to, to look through you, right? Through you so they don't punch, like try to avoid you or try to look for you, like that kind of punch, right? So she's gonna be here, like one. And that's fine, she hit me here, that's fine. Better that than my face, right? She hit me here, oh. Now I go back, hold on. One, back two. Back three, all right? Pay attention, attention. She's not gonna throw a left hook and you're gonna do this. This is not the matrix, the movie, all right? You're gonna go here, throw, no, throw left hook. All right, so chin down. Most common mistake, people that get knocked out, walking backwards. Beginners, classic. I call beginner's classic. Even if I'm going stepping back, that's the, we're gonna talk about in the next class. Um, I saw a few top guys doing this drill a lot, and I will break down next class when we step, then you have right, left, right, or cross, hook cross. Because as I brace and the stock, that short right hand, granted that my opponent's coming at me, it's really useful. And we're gonna put a little head tilt just in case. But that's another good drill, right? So left, one, two, three. So, recapping. Huh? No, stay right there. Clockwork, front foot, clockwise, counterclockwise, uh, both sides, cool. Now you can, Put more angles as well. Last one, you guys are gonna march, right? And remember that leg, not, it's not good. Front leg, I can move, right? I can check, I can sit, I can turn, right? Front leg, loose, right? That's why some people like to just stay in the ball of the feet, just a little bit. We used to do that for, I don't know even how many hours. Not hours, but at least good chunks of 30 minutes. So just on the ball of your feet, just on the ball of your feet, you know, elevation change, this leg loose. But learn how to cut 45 angles. And I will break that down more next class. Look for angles, whole time guys. A strategy to go back is just not a good thing. Unless you are Muhammad Ali, uh, or Anderson Silva, that was really good. Carter, 
striker moving backwards. Um, exceptions to the rules, of course, always. But think about how you move. And even if you want to go, do your little slip with a step and a little turn. So now I'm putting together the two arm up techniques during, during your shuttle boxing. So one was the footwork. And footwork, if you go back to the first class, I was telling you to have more weight on the ball of your feet. And when I say that, some guys go like this. I'm like, come on, no. Your feet naturally touch the floor. But you never walk heel to toes, heel to toes, heel to toes. At least me, I don't. I'm always like shuffle, I shuffle. So I, I move, but I'm more here. So if you could see my footprint, it would be more 50, on the front 50% of my feet. My heel is on the ground, but it's almost like I could get a razor blade and go through under my heel without cutting my skin. So that's how I want to be, right? So you can hear the swoosh, right? On my feet, on the ground. Now, when I'm walking forward and I just want to work my slip, my slips, I can go forward, forward. Imagine like I'm slipping, so I'm showing, showing my shoulder, not blocking my, my vision. I want to still be able to see. I will get that. So I go, I'm moving. Look, a little slip, a little step from our warm up, and that little turn from our warm up. When I'm going to my right, I could be moving, moving, moving. Instead of doing this, you see how I'm crossing right over the line. If I want to slip to my right, instead of slipping like that, I'm not a big fan because I'm wired to think like MMA self-defense, right? Unless, exceptions. I was doing a slow, slow draw with the firearm at three o'clock on my hip. Then maybe I'm here, right, for some reason. Because as I rotate, I can present. Uh, not the case. So I went to the side, I'm moving, moving. I'm slipping to my right. I want to have follow, quick follow up. I'm going here. And now I'm in this angle. You guys are going to see this, how I tied up together next class. So as I'm moving on, Right? As I'm moving on, here. So if I use silver, then now you can use another friend. And people, calm down. Um, this actually puts me away from this follow up, second strike that my opponent will try to go for. Uh, silver will be right here. I'm going to throw a one or a two. So if you have a friend that could help you, in your backyard and you're doing your online training, I'm gonna just signal to her very quick. I'm not gonna keep doing that to not create training scars and have her wait for cues. But as I throw my left, she stepped and I would rather if she had moved a little bit closer to me. So look at this. She will throw her left. I'm going here. Now guys, uh, just one second. See. This is interesting too. Footwork is kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's very, very important, very important. If I'm here and I'm slipping to my right and I don't want to go back to slip to my left because I don't know if my opponent is going to throw a one, two, if it's an orthodox fighter. When I'm going here, what happened here? What did happen here, Sugar? I switched my fight stance, correct? And I'm facing this way. Is that right? No. Because when I turn this way, I'm back to my fight stance. So you understand? So if I'm here, I'm moving, and I'm slipping in a cross, and people are like, oh, would you, you, you change your fight stance? No, I'm not, because I'm getting back into facing my target, but through the flanks. So if I'm here, right, and I do that slip, I'm right here, it's quick. Doo -doo. That's it. So that's why I'm not too big into going here, to here, that's a whole change, right? And I expose myself. 
because I'll be creating more distance. In my case, I'm shortening the distance so I can have connection and I can have takedowns. Make sense? So if Silva throws to her left slowly here, I'll go right and I'm right here. Because now from here, that's when I have different things. Right? You can see I have takedowns, I have like good front uppercut, I have my half overhand, overhand, um, I have takedowns, bunch of stuff. And also, if she throws her right here, I'm here and I'm right here again. So again, things that you can do from there, right? Because by the time she faces me, I'm putting another combination. So I'm keeping her always one step behind if I do a good job with footwork, right? Footwork will help you stay one step ahead. So MMA guys, actually I went over the time, so I will do the floor drills next time. You're doing your shadow boxing, make it so you come back whenever we can reopen better than you were. Okay, that's why I'm giving you uh, these really good lessons here. And those are fundamentals that most people will not teach you. Okay, this is like, this is gold in my opinion. Because most people, they just like, oh, come on, more guy here, I'll sign you up and you're going to be a punching bag for my advanced students. Not here, not at American Top Team, not under my watch. Under my watch, you get there, you learn technique first. Once you're like a beast technique-wise, then we make you a beast in everything else and you start sparring. But number one, before you walk, you need to crawl. Before you, you run, you need to walk. Right? So if you go to a place that people use you as like that punching bag over there on your first day and don't teach you like this, cancel your contract, get out of there. Honestly, you need to know the basics. You need to know your foundation. If you don't have that foundation, you're always going to be pushed back, pushed back, boom, oh, you're on the wall. I'm like, why, why I cannot connect my right hand? Because nobody told you to stop punching and leaning on that jab. Why you keep getting tagged every time you move back from your slips? Because nobody told you to cut corners. So I'm giving you here like secrets of my classes. I shouldn't be doing this. And that's what set us apart. But... That's one more reason to come train with me. Thank you very much. Um, next class is Wednesday. I'm gonna follow up with everything we have been doing here. Um, the video gonna stay. Um, I really appreciate everybody that have been keeping the memberships current. Stay focused, stay motivated. I just recorded one more video for everyone. I'm posting tomorrow about focus, motivation, and staying active. Okay, it's very, very important that you guys stay active. Very, very important that you guys stay focused and motivated. Watch my next video. Will be one of my weekly talk number 10. Um, don't forget, guys, subscribe. Hit the notification button. Because once I get a thousand subscribers, I can stream this and with, with a way better quality just using my mobile app instead of uh, using stream labs and a bunch of other stuff right right now i'm doing like a whole work around try to figure out this at home with i'm not like that of a youtuber but you guys got the idea all right thank you very much god bless you guys stay safe follow the the recommendations from the government and don't fall for group identity i keep repeating this in every video that i have all right think for yourself and pay attention to my new session the Great Matter Project. God bless you guys.